Welcome back. So we will be working on my Audi A3 TDI. Based on the title of this video, you can have an idea of what we will be doing. As you can see here, I have a custom exhaust kit from Darkside Developments. We will be gutting out the EGR and the DPF from this car as it is doing nothing good but choking my engine. I have not seen any videos out there or guides for this specific install. There's a lot for raw tech. There's even a PDF guide for it as well. With that being said, I'm going to be going off of raw tech's installation guides and removal. However, it's going to be a little bit different given that this exhaust is a little bit different from raw tech. It's just gonna give me a guideline of what to go based off of. So this is the kit itself. Depending on what you get, the price is going to change. Um, and keep in mind, the tuner is completely separate, so you do have to buy that, and the software. But to be quite honest, for everything that I got here is what you need, and it's really not as expensive as a raw tech kit. I think this is like $1,500, whereas raw tech is about $2,000 for the low end. So as you can see here, we got the pipe itself. It's really nice, but these you get hardware, a gasket. You also have block off plates for the EGR, race pipe, what have you. And then this is the computer that you'll use. Like I said, I'll be going off of Rawtex installation guide. Just keep in mind, there are some things that are kind of skipped over and not really shown in the guide. I will go over those in the video. This video is intended to be a thorough deep dive on how to remove everything and install this properly. All right, first things first, if you haven't already done so, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect your battery. The second thing you will go ahead and remove is this bracket here that has a sensor here. It's held off by one T27 screw. Pull it, use my handy dandy sensor removal tool and we're gonna take the sensor out. All right, once you got that unhooked, you got two T30 screws here. Small flathead just to pry it open. There you go. Unfortunately, I lost my audio here, but literally all you need to do is just pry the sensor off the hoses. It, it takes a good bit of effort to take it off. And we're not going to reuse these sensors either, so you can save them or toss them, whatever you want to do with it. Then you'll move to the back of the engine. We're going to remove the other sensor. It's the same thing. It's a little bit annoying as far as placement goes. So if you have a stubby, it's going to help a lot. And it's going to be the same uh, T27 screw. I pulled up the heat shield just a little bit because there's a bolt um, on this bracket that's holding the sensor right below it, and it's the same T27. Just pop it out. Alrighty, now the next thing we need to do is take off this cover shield here. And you have these three 10 millimeter bolts that um, The other thing that we're going to do is we have these retaining clips in the back that are holding the cables. Uh, it's generally just going to be these three cables here. You have this one right here and then there's one here in the back. It's kind of hidden. Um, it's the same. Well, I don't want to say it's the same, but it's similar to this. Um, so you just want to pop that out. And then I'll try and show you the back one because the clip in the back is a little bit different. You might need some pliers to get that one out. Um, so You'll see. So you free those out. 
Just set them to the side for now. And I forgot to mention, you have this one more clip hidden in the back as well. It's next to the middle clip. So we got those loose. Um, these are the two that we're gonna need. To the battery, there are two connectors that we'll need to remove. It's gonna be this orange one that you see, and you have to remove the brown one that we see in the back there. Alrighty, so next up is going to be the oxygen sensor. Okay. Alright, that we got the oxygen sensor off, we will be needing to take off the DPF bracket, a 13 millimeter hex bolt. So step is we're gonna have to go underneath the car, take off the skid plate, and then uh, we'll go from there. So it looks like the next step is we need to remove these retaining brackets that are underneath the exhaust. Um, it looks like there's two of them with two bolts on each side. Okay, so we're going to take off the front ones. The cables to the other O2 sensor are clipped onto this bracket. I want to use a, like a flathead just to pry them off. So once you got the plate off, you have another O2 sensor. Alright, so now that we got the O2 sensor off, and then now we need to unplug this cable here. There. Now that we have these wires free, we'll need to remove this plate back here. Alright, now that we got this goofy plastic out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and remove all these connectors here. These are for the NOx and O2 sensors. The only cable that you will need to remove from this whole bunch is just the O2 sensor. These three guys, you're going to leave in the car. I'm just going to cover these up nicely with some electrical tape. And I'm just going to return that bracket and tuck these in and close up this. I think it might be better. and then just pull it slowly there we go you want to take off the mountain bracket that's right here before you take off the v-clamp so you got two 13 millimeter Based on the manual, you're supposed to remove the axle heat shield. There's two 16 millimeter bolts that would sit here. However, in my car, it is missing. So the next step is going to be removing the axle itself. That way we can remove the DPF. So now that you have your axle free, we're going to go ahead and remove the V-clamp up there. Okay, so now we need to remove two of these 13 millimeter bolts. Remove it. Go ahead and 
remove the V-band clip from the turbo up there. Go ahead and pry off this clamp. And I forgot to mention, we do need to remove this DPF bracket here in order to let it come down. Okay, so now from above, we need to guide two of the EGT sensors down. We're going to loosen this one from this side. So we'll go ahead and take these guys and we'll guide it down to that opening. Alright, so now that you have those sensors dropped down here, we go behind the subframe and just guide them through here because essentially we're going to be pulling the DPF through this area. We did not loosen the subframe, which I'm not going to do that. Put an emphasis that it will be a huge pain in the ass to take this out. They just need to pull it out of the room from the subframe, just kind of twist it around. They say it may seem like it's stuck. It probably is, so you just keep pulling it um, to get the DPF out. Oh my god! It's out! So now that you got your DPF out, we need to take this bracket off, transfer it over to the new exhaust. Separate our cats because we're going to keep the secondary cat. We do not need the primary. This one, there we go. Alrighty, so now that we got the secondary cat separated and you buy the kit from dark side they give you three options here two and a half three inch secondary cat delete or dpf only that's what i went with as stated here you get a slip joint exhaust reducer with a v-band fitting that would be this right here I'll go on to the cat itself so i'm going to be able to reuse my v-band clips however dark side does sell these clips if you need it they also give you a new metal gasket to put here. While we are at it, we will be using this 102 sensor with our kit. Try and clean this as well. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, built up on it. I'm just gonna use a brush. Now we're gonna be cleaning the turbo inlet and then we're gonna add the gasket. Just give it a good wipe. Get rid of any crud. It's a lot. and feed 
downpipe through the bottom and just have it here. So in this kit, you'll have a gasket. Yeah. Same grease on each side of this gasket. I only applied it to one side. I'll apply the other side once we are ready to tighten it up. Stick this bad boy on there. There we go. So while we're here, we will install our, our O2 sensor. Before we do that, we're going to use some anti-seize, just in case if we need to take this off and service it, whatever the case is. So what we're going to do is we're going to twist the cable the other way. That way, it just kind of recoils as we tighten it. Nice and completely forgot to mention that once you get the exhaust installed, you also have an additional clamp that comes with the kit. I completely forgot to mention, but the CV axle bolts, if they're like mine, you have these 12 point M10 bolts. You will have to replace those with new ones. You can't reuse them because these are stretch bolts. You can get these on ECS tuning. They're about a dollar a piece. So I didn't include in this video on how to do the EGR delete and EGR cooler. Um, I'm gonna have a part two for that just cause I didn't want this video to get too long. Um, so please watch that video. It should be up shortly after this one. Um, with that being said, most people put a block off plate where that red circle is on the EGR, which is the exhaust manifold pipe. I had that. It caused problems and it can crack. So please, for the love of God, just delete the entire EGR system if you do to decide to do this. Um, and with that being said, if you do do this, um, don't put the axle back together because you're going to need that to be removed as well. It's going to make it a little bit easier. But other than that, I hope you found this video helpful. I tried my best to be clear and film everything that I can. Um, if you have any questions or even critiques, please let me know.